The BBC have said to me, we have no plans to ban you. When Basil's seen upon the screen, you can't help laughing, can you? <laughs> Gentlemen, the star of our show, Basil Brush. Basil, where are you? Here I am. <laughs> hello, 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 and to the shoe. Welcome. Hey, Basil, how did you get down here? I came by underground. Oh, 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 hey. <laughs> Let's get this show on the roof. I must say, our producer's done us proud. With special guests, the super band, singers, dancing ladies, and a wonderful crowd for laughing out loud. In this particular TV spectacular, spectacular. well, I'm blown. <laughs> I'm feeling like a millionaire. I'm full of nerves, but I don't care. Let's get this show on the roadway. Their feet never leave their legs through the whole thing. Go, go watch out! I'm very heavily insured, you know. Go! Hello, Louie, 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 Lou, and to the shoe away. <laughs> hey, just a minute. What? Where's Stanley? Where's Stanley the statue? Here Where is he? he is. Oh, that's not Stanley. Stanley hasn't got a blooming great hooter like that. I put the disguise on him this week. Well, who's he supposed to be? William the Conk? <laughs> Stanley is in the guise of a famous literary figure. Oh, I know, Ollie Beak. <laughs> it's not Ollie Beak. And you shouldn't laugh at him. He's got a magnificent nose. Yes. Many famous men in history had extra large noses. All fine, upright, and admirable people. True, I suppose. I knew a man who was clean living, honest, trustworthy, and a paragon of virtue. And he had one of the biggest hooters I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. What was his name? Goodness knows. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> but this man yeah. was probably the most famous name of all, was Serrano it? de Bergerac. Oh, yes. Now, his was a household name. Oh, I knew a chap with a household name, Fred Kitchen. Mm. <laughs> you couldn't get more household than that, could you? I wonder if there's anyone else called, uh, like, Bertie Bucket or Charlie Gastu. They're good household names. What about uh, Basil Brush? I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I say, Mr Roy, yeah? you've forgotten the most famous schnoz of all. Who's that? Ah. <laughs> Sitting at my piano the other day. <laughs> I probably think it's funny. <laughs> boom, boom! <laughs> Hello! Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm over here, here, here. <laughs> Basil, what are you hiding from? You. I fancy the game of hide and seek, anything to pass the time. I'm blooming fed up with walking around these woods. Just think, though, Basil. Yes. Over 800 years ago, in this very wood, yes. Robin Hood would assemble his outlaws. Oh, outlaws? 
Outlaws? They're baddies. Outlaws are worse than in-laws. Come. Hey, I wonder if that hollow oak tree is the one they used to call Robin Hood's Lager. Well, I wouldn't do. He used to hide his deer in there. Really? Hey, there's somebody in there. Hey, it's three of Robin Hood's old deers. Oh, dear, what can the matter be? Three old ladies locked in the hollow tree. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Oh. I'm Robin of Loxley. Gosh. Hey, Basil. Yes? It's Robin Hood. Hey. But he's been dead since the 12th century. Hey, he looks very well, doesn't he, considering? <laughs> oh, he's got a lovely lip. <laughs> hey, look at that. It's the crowd from the Kres. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's Robin's Merry Men. By, oh. they're a colourful-looking bunch, aren't they? Uh -huh. My faithful band are all stout-hearted men. I see. The one in the front's a funny-looking, stout-hearted man. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> that one's marrying my wife. Marrying your wife? You can't marry your wife. That'd be bigotry. <laughs> <laughs> Marion, come meet Master North and Basil Brush. <laughs> Good morrow, Master North. Oh, welcome to Sherwood, Basil. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Did you really think I was one of Robin's merry men? Well, uh, not exactly. I, uh, I just thought you looked a bit merrier than the rest of them. <laughs> can shoot an arrow as straight and as true as anyone, Basil. Oh. But apart from that, I am a woman. <laughs> yes, I suppose you are, really. <laughs> but nowadays you can't be too sure, can you? <laughs> Don't be rude. I say, Mr. Robin, who's that chap with the Stone Age banjo? Ah, our minstrel, Alan Adale, oh. a fine musician and a brave and courageous fighter. Yeah, and playing that thing that takes a lot of pluck. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Alan writes the most wonderful songs, Basil. Oh, yes. Nolly, nolly, no, nolly, no. land of evil scoundrels like Prince John, yes. and I will not rest until every son of England is free. Oh. I'm free. Yeah. 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 Look out, look out, look out. Mr. Humphrey's about. What a terrible experience. Do you know, I've been locked in there with a couple of dozen squirrels, all looking for somewhere to put their acorns for the winter. <laughs> gentleman is not Prince John. Oh, oh me? A prince? Oh, I should be so lucky ducky, do no? <laughs> so I am John, the landlord of the Blue Boar Inn. Oh, it's John the Inman. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in the woods, Mr. John? Oh, didn't you know, Basil? Today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic. <laughs> Do you know, I've got to wait on the furry little horrors when I am so fed up. I have to give them the ginger beer and, and then I have to say it to them. Say what, Mr. John? Are you being served? <laughs> <laughs> it's all go, isn't it? Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Miss Killer. Go. It's Scylla. Oh, I'm Cory. <laughs> I'm glad you came to see us, Miss Scylla. Come well, Basil, I want to tell you, I'm very lucky to be here. Oh, aren't we all? I had a terrible job getting on a bus. Anyway, perhaps uh, we won't have to queue for a bus after the show, eh? Well, we should be so lucky. Yes. <laughs> that five o'clock rush is a pain in me brush. It doesn't seem right. For an hour in the shower till the bus comes along. What's it all about, Bessie? <laughs> 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 Anyone who ever loved would look at me and they wouldn't show. Everybody else is tall, and I am we. 
they tower above me? Why do they shove me so? advice to you. Don't, Don't make, make a fuss, fuss if you miss the bus. Try shanks is pony just, just like us. us. Little Mickey Knack. Ready, whack. You are not alone. Everyone will walk in home. My friend, friend and me two will be walking home. Be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready, be Between me toes, in me eyes, and up me nose, and in me ear, too, and everywhere. <laughs> I see. Um, um, Derek. Yes. Uh, where are we exactly? The Sheik Elran Seed's camp. Is he really? <laughs> He's a very hospitable chap, isn't he? That is what worries me, mon ami. Huh? The Sheik is the sworn enemy of France. I am puzzled why he treats us like the honored guests. I do not trust him. Well, he must be popular with some people. Look, he's got his own fan club. <laughs> I say, Shiki, Shiki, old chap, that was a jolly nice dinner, but what's the catch? I'm most glad you asked that question, Effendi. You are welcome in my humble tent, but I regret I must demand a small recompense for the hospitality you receive. I knew it. We've got to pay for our dinner. Uh, I'm sorry, Shiki, old chap, uh, but they only pay us five francs a day and I'm skint. I have a feeling, Basil, that the Sheik does not want money from us. That is quite true. You have a most discerning comrade, Effendi. El Rancid, what do you want of us? A little information, my friend, in return for which I offer you the hospitality of my Ted Plus. A little pecuniary reward, shall we say? And if we don't give you this information? I fear the alternative is painful, but my men enjoy it. Perhaps they will pluck out your tongues with a red-hot pincer? Oh, or bury oh. you up to your necks in the sand and leave you to the scorpions? Ugh, nasty, creepy things. Ugh, don't like scorpions. On the other hand, this most painful and unpleasant business can be avoided. If you tell me when your colonel will arrive with the relief column... Never, El Rancid. We do not betray our comrades no matter what you do to us. We die for La Belle France. We always fight for what is right. Deep in the heart of Texas. See him! <laughs> Take him away! No. And torture him till he talks! No, wait! Hang on a minute. Leave him alone, you rough riff. <laughs> you can't torture my comrade. I couldn't stand all that screaming. It would give me a shocking headache. I'll tell you when the relief column is coming. No, no, Bob Rush, do not be the traitor. Do not tell Zer. Silence, son of a camel! Go oh, all this blooming shouting. Oh. Come, speak. Well. This afternoon, I saw a letter from the colonel who said that the regiment would not be arriving until my birthday. So, that is good. Release him, huh? save the blues. <laughs> With no water. Huh? The desert will take care of them, and we will take care of the regiment. <laughs> Aha, hey, hey. Stand back, Bob Pachon! It is the relief column! Legionnaire, you gave me your honor, they would not arrive until your birthday. Well, it's my birthday today, you silly old fool. All together, please. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday. Now, in last week's. Greater happy... love hath no man <laughs> than he who lays down his boom boom for a friend. <laughs> Boom, boom, you in a minute. You wouldn't boom, boom, little Bazzy, would you? <laughs> Don't you know it's been kind of Bazzy week? Come on, come on. As an Indian steward served drinks at the dinner table, uh, Basil uh, failed to see him empty the contents of a file into his glass of port. Hey, I say, excuse me. What? What's that thing? Ah, that's mine. It's an executive's plaything. Oh, like a secretary. <laughs> 
No, look. Oh. Right, now suppose that an executive yeah. has got a big decision to make, a big yeah. business decision. Right, yeah. he gets this going like that. Yeah. <laughs> and it helps him concentrate. Hey, I say, can I have a go? All right, then. All right. Yeah. Just a minute. Right, there you are. Hey! That's fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. I prefer the secretary. <laughs> Come on, that's enough of that. Let's oh, get right. back to the story. Yeah, right. right now, where were we? Ah, yes. As Basil raised the glass. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Tiny balls on end the street. Tiny balls on end the street. Tiny balls. Tiny balls. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Now, come on, stop it. Stop that at once. What a load of old border dash. <laughs> right, you have asked for it. Moi! <laughs> boom, boom! <laughs> oh, a life on the ocean wave to fish in a rolling deep. But the fishes won't stay awake. I think they're all fast asleep. Boom, boom! <laughs> 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 Huh? Don't make so much noise, you'll frighten all the fish away. Frighten them away? I don't think they're up yet. Cool. They're all still in their kip. Hey, you little fishies down there. Everybody out of kip. Come on, you kippers. Wakey, wakey. <laughs> Basil's been up here hours. All asleep in the deep. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh, good morning, sir. Yes, of course. Yes, straight on, straight on. <laughs> he want? He was asking the way to France. I know the cross-channel fares have gone up, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> but you sent him that way. Huh? That's, that's north. He'll end up in, in Iceland. Really? Hey, bring us back two chalk ices and the vanilla cornet for Willie. <laughs> hey, hey, I've, I've got a bite. Cool, we'll put something on it quick. <laughs> what is it? What is it? It's a big one. It's a big one. Oh. I've got him. I've got him. Cool. Oh, look at that, eh? Oh, no. Throw it back. Why should I throw it back? That's no good. Someone's been sitting on it. <laughs> it's a flatfish, you fool. That's a beautiful lemon sole. Poor little thing. Did you know, Mr Howard, a lady's sole lays millions of eggs a year and nobody remembers it on Mother's Day? Mm. <laughs> Hence the expression, poor old soul. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, did you see that? See what? Cool, a blooming great giant tiddler. Well, I didn't see anything. <laughs> well, I did. I've seen him before on the pictures. He's called Gums or something like that. <laughs> Just look at all that sea. Yes, mm. and that's only the top of it. Hey, now what are you doing? My nut. That's what I'm doing. That massive sardine with the National Health Choppers came back. <laughs> you, I told you you're imagining it. Can we please have some peace and quiet? We won't catch anything. Cool. Whew. Gave me quite a turn, that did. Cool. Wonder how far we are from land? About half a mile. Which direction? Straight down. <laughs> and I don't blooming well like it either. Go, cool, Mr. Howard, look! I've got something. Look! Oh, Willie's got on, it by the throat. Help you. Quick, hold on, hold yeah. on to it, quick. Hey, it's a shark. I know it is. Go! Hang on, Willie. Don't let him get away. Go! Hold on. Go oh, no. Hey, it's James Bond. <laughs> no, it's not. It's Henry Cooper. <laughs> hey! hey. Go! Oh, oh. I have to get rid of the shark, Mr. Henry. I'll give him the old left hook, didn't I? Sure. So you still got Henry's hammer, have you? <laughs> Here, Basil, yes. didn't see a golf ball come this way, did you? I sliced me bloody drive off the ninth. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom! <laughs> oh, what's this you've got here, Basil? Ah, oh, Stanley's going to help me fill that in. It's my income tax form. Yeah. It came from income tax headquarters in Hampshire, a little place called Andover. <laughs> You've read it thoroughly. I have. Do you see that footnote on the bottom? Yeah. It says, if your surname is Stone, please state your blood group. <laughs> <laughs> What's yours, Stanley? Me, who's a little baldy bumpstead. <laughs> hey, Basil. Yes. If you were Chancellor of the Exchequer, what things would you put tax on? Schoolroom furniture and teachers' chairs. What tax would you put on teachers' chairs? Tin tax. <laughs> <laughs> Tin tax! <laughs> 
it's about someone telling they gave him a rise anyway. Oh, I wish I could get a rise. I'm Boracic. B R O K E Skint. I've told you before, you're not thrifty enough. That's hardly fair, is it? I mean, my only extravagance is spending money. Oh. <laughs> well, you know the old saying, don't What's you? That? A fool and his money are soon parted. Who got yours? <laughs> you should try to make ends meet. I do try, but every time I manage to make ends meet, somebody moves the ends. <laughs> You are a nut, aren't you? I'm a nut, yes. Hey, we've got a great guest on the show. Have we really? Yep. Yeah. He's a big star on the continent. Oh, yes. He's a super singer and he's Greek. He's not Kojak. <laughs> we can't have two baldy bonces on the show at once. It's Demis Roussos. Oh, anyone for Demis? <laughs> Listen, you know something? You should come to Greece. May I stay for more than one day? Basil, you can stay as long as you like. Oh. <laughs> Ever and ever, oh. ever and ever, you'll be the one. I'll welcome you like the morning sun. I hear your weather is better than ever. It's always green. The sun's as high as the soul to see. <laughs> I'll take you far beyond imagination. What a dream come true! I'll have a vacation. Ever and ever, forever and ever, my guest you'll be. I'll come with you, but what will I see? You'll see a lot of things. Really? I'll tell you with the music. Come on, tell me, tell me, tell me. The sun. Yes. The sea. Yes. Beautiful scenery. I like it. There is a song. Yes. Everywhere. Romance. You can feel in the air. How I wish I was there. Of course. Tell me now. So here. What? Guitars. Playing beneath the stars, they serve the wine and food. I can feel it on my lips. <laughs> that was soccer and chips. <laughs> <laughs> See the happy people following the old tradition when they kite and tent a fern, singing, dancing to musician, playing melodies of peasant music, lilting composition. I had a friend named Mama Juki, played those tunes on his bazooki, but alas, he came unstuck. Bazooki takes a lot of pluck. Greek singing, you and I should do a thing. I can't sing as high as you. In my language, speak to me. I would, but it's all Greek to me. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be happy there in my land, on my island, my idyllic island in the sun. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Basil's bar, in Basil's bar, it pays to advertise. For we say hello with goodbyes. <laughs> Have we got some good buys for you today? Oh. I say, Mr. Howard, you've mm. been shopping? I have, yes. and for good buys, you cannot beat Alfresco Supermarket. Oh, how true, Mr. H. This afternoon, I went to Alfresco Supermarket and purchased a jar of coffee. Today's special offer. Special offer? Yes, it was the same price as yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Add this to your shopping list. M.A.S. Marjorie. Yes, M.A.S., folks. Specially blended for the over 40s. If you're over 40, use your head. And cover your bread with middle-aged spread. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried Munchy Wunchy, the only candy bar that actually does you good? Try a bar of Munchy Wunchy and enjoy the unique taste of cocoa-flavoured sawdust. One <laughs> bite of munchy, vitamin rich Munchy Wunchy candy. Gives you enough strength and energy to throw the rest of it away. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom! <laughs> They seek him here, they seek him there, they seek him everywhere. Those Frenchies, is he in heaven, is he in hell? That dim, elusive Tinkerbell. 
<laughs> well, here, Sir Percy. Huh? Our mission is nearly finished. Ah, thanks jolly awfully, Andrew Pip. <laughs> Devilish tiring journey from Paris, what? <laughs> right, um, where's that damned attractive filly we rescued, the Countess Anita de Chanson? I am here, Basil. Oh. And I am fed up with this play already. Now, you didn't tell me I'd have to carry you all the way from Paris. You told me I'd have a leading role. And so you shall, my dear. Next time, you can go in front, and Sir Andrew can have the back legs. <laughs> Basil. They seek him here, they seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Sir Percy, did you hear that? That man could be our contact. By God, Andrew, you could be white. I shall make him prove himself by posing a riddle. That's right. Ask him a riddle. If he gives us the right answer, then he's our man. Right. Gaco! Oh, Gaco! I say, old chap, I say, old chap, I say, old chap. Oui, monsieur. Uh, what's the jolly difference between uh, Mademoiselle and Madam? Monsieur? Correct! He's white by you. Absolutely. What? Ah, 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 ah. Oh, come on, it's your line next. Come oh, on. Sorry, Basil, mate. <laughs> the lilies in Normandy are blooming early. Uh, uh, the answer, please. But grass doesn't grow on a busy street. Ah, you can take a horse to water. But a pencil must be lead. <laughs> uh, I am satisfied. You are the real scarlet Tinkerbell. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> and no one else could be so stupid. I beg your pardon. Now we shall all work together. One for all. And all for one. <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry, guys. You know, you're not the poem out of me weak. Can you see the joint? It's all right. All right. Huh? Monsieur, thank for that. we have heard that villain Chauvelin is coming here to meet a woman agent. Ah, do not worry, monsieur. She is safely locked away. Oh, thank goodness for that. Uh, Madame Contess, I will take you upstairs. Hey, you're at living again. <laughs> no, we're going up there to hide while Sir Percy deals with that villain Chauvelin. Now, wait, wait. Do not be in such a wash. How will I recognize this waffenly rascal? His hands are like ice. By Joe, cold finger. <laughs> <laughs> Citizen innkeeper, in the name of the Committee of Public Safety, attend me. Citizen Chauvelin. Mon Dieu. <laughs> that pianist has been following me around all day. <laughs> so, I have a rendezvous with a certain lady. Has she arrived? Ah, I'm over here, waiting for you, Bob Cherry. Aha. Ah! ah. Beautiful spy. At last we meet. <laughs> Allow me to present myself, my petit poulet. I am Chauvelin of a branch of the Committee of Public Safety. Ah, I have heard of your beauty. That beautiful hair, my favorite shade of peroxide. Those pretty ears, those eyes, those teeth, those nose. Where did you get those beautiful eyes? They came with my head. <laughs> Comme les autres femmes. Uh, pardon? I said, you are not like the other women. You don't know the half of it, mate, are you? I am after the Scarlet Tinkerbell. And soon, I shall have my hands on him. You keep your hands to yourself. We're only acting, you know. <laughs> Wait! Aha! Aha, Sir Percy. At last I have you. Madame la Guillotine will be disappointed. But I will save her the trouble. I will kill you myself. That's what you think, you Swedish foggy! <laughs> oh. Hey! hey. So Quickly! We must make our escape! And Mr. Basil Brush will now entertain us with a traditional English song. <laughs> okay. Vegetables and fruit, you know, are like the human race. A prune is just a worried plum with wrinkles on its face. You know darn well a muscatel related to a grape. Rhubarb is bloodshot celery. It's obvious by its shape. <laughs> and what's more, a uh, marrow's a banana's father, a marrow's a banana's dad. It started life as a gherkin, 
and it hasn't done so bad. So if you slip on a banana, remember this, my lad. A man who's a banana's father, a man who's a banana's dad. <laughs> a potato's like it's Peter, and tomatoes are the same. A pea looks like another pea, hereditary is to blame. That's why apples look alike when hanging on a tree. And after some consideration, I'm sure you will agree. <laughs> All together now, peace. A uh, marrow's a banana's father, a marrow's a banana's dad. He started life as a curtain, so it hasn't done so bad. So if you slip on a banana, remember this, my lad. A marrow's a banana's father, a marrow's a banana's dad. A marrow's a banana's father, yes. A marrow's a banana's dad. <laughs> From the enemy. Now, as senior officer and president of the escape committee, I shall brief you all on the plan of escape. Now, give me the plans. Where's the plans? Where's the plans? Who's got the plans? Ah, good. They're down there. Fine. Now, I've written it in invisible ink. It's top secret, so I want you all to study it and memorize it. I can't read it, sir. Of course you can't read it. <laughs> if you could read it, the ink wouldn't be invisible, would it? <laughs> Stupid boy. <laughs> Now then, Flight Sergeant Howard and I will make our escape through the underground tunnel. And the rest of you will make a belt for it over the barbed wire fence. Corporal Mitchell has volunteered to stay behind, sir, and put the Germans off the scent. A silly fool. No, I think that's a very brave and generous act, Corporal. <laughs> <laughs> I personally shall make sure that the name of Corporal George Mitchell goes down in history. Oh. Right now, men, all of you who are going over the wire, put on your commando-style makeup so that you won't be seen in the dark. Flight Sergeant Williams and I will put on our disguises. Parade! Attention! Parade! Blur! <laughs> oh. Are you ready now? Yes, I'm ready. Right. right. Let's take it off now. That's look. better. Right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what are you supposed to be? I'm a French mademoiselle. <laughs> Those German soldiers won't think of searching a mademoiselle, will they? I wouldn't bank on it. If they do, I shall hit them with my handbag. Go on. <laughs> Escape over the wire party. Fall in! <laughs> oh, absolutely bang on and we'll kill. Well done, men. Right, let's go. <clears throat> hey, look out! There's the Commandant and three soldiers just gone past the window in big steel helmets. They're Jerry's. Well, they look like helmets. Ah, good evening, Commandant. It's a nice nacht, isn't it? Fire on the rush. Uh huh. As senior officer of the prisoners, I wish to know why you are dressed as a Fraulein. And your men have black boot polish on their faces. Ah, yes. Well, you see, uh, we are rehearsing for the camp concert. Uh, and I couldn't look more camp than this, could I? <laughs> <laughs> and the so. sunburnt look on my men, well, they're, um, they're doing a minstrel show, you see. Ach so. And why have some of them black faces on some white faces. Ah, well, it's a mixture, you see, sir. A sort of uh, black and white minstrel show. Uh, <laughs> what are you writing, Corporal Mitchell? Oh, I like that idea, sir. I thought I might use it after the war. <laughs> Stupid boy. <laughs> right, men, all together! By delight. Of the silvery moon. Very good, very good. Oh, it's a brush. Jump top. Cool, that went right up my brush. Right. What's zero hour? Come on, lads. Let's uncover the tunnel. Right, right, come on then. Come on then. Flight sergeant, follow me. Come on, there you go, sir. Right. Down you go, sir. Cheerio. Good luck to all of you. Right. Hey, hey, just a minute, just a minute. You've forgotten the onions. Where's the onions? Oh, onions, 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 onions. Look, onions. what do I want this lot for? Well, we might be to flog a few on the way home. Yeah. Cheerio, lads. Good, Good luck. Good luck. Right, Sergeant. Oh. 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 Right, right, down, right. Ah. Hey, there's an half pen and ink in here, doesn't it? We must have been down here 20 years. Yeah. Hey, let's take a chance and start tunnelling upwards. All right, light the last candle. OK. Oh, give it here. I'll light it. Oh. Hey, oh, oh, hey, oh. you nut. What's the matter? That's not a candle. Huh? That's a stick of dynamite. Oh, get down. Get away with it. Oh, quick. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Men, 
melodies. I want to hear them sung again. You sing so well. Ah. <laughs> okay, but this, this is where we get real sexy. What's with the what's what, what's with the clicky? Come on, Basil, baby, let's move it and groove it. Well, shake the paper, Mr. Album, please don't lose it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Some rhythm that gets into your heart and soul. It's gonna die, but Basil, please let's face it. But they just don't know what's going to replace it. Oh no, no, oh no. Ballads and calypsos, they've got nothing on. I'm wearing leather trousers and I'm real, real gone. Come on, move it, move it. Oh, come on, move it. Oh, come on. Won't you really love the things that you do? Come on and love me too. Won't you be my cool bitch? People talk, you know. Basil, man, I like your dress. I do rather with it, I must confess. Basil, man, you look a bit of a mess. You look a proper cool bitch. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> And for uh, personal cleanliness. Oh. Soothing, refreshing, hygienic, romantic, me bath crystals. At the end of the day, do you feel tired, jaded, listless, and languid? I do. Then take a bath with me. No, <laughs> oh, take a bath, thank you. <laughs> Do you know why my bloodhound Henry enjoys his food? <laughs> because I give him liberal portions. <laughs> Blooming great dollops of the new common market dog food from Germany, Morsed Minzels. <laughs> God, I say steady on. I, for your favourite pet, you must always get Morsed Minzels. Your little doggy will love you for it. <laughs> God! God! And to the shoe, Will. <laughs> well, Basil, this is the first time we've ever done a show in this studio. Ah, oh, it's marvellous. And haven't they given us a marvellous set? Yes, it certainly is. Look at all these statues. Yes, is that one of the teams from Top of the Four? <laughs> no, these are all classical figures. Oh. Do you recognise this one? No, I don't think we've met. I'm not surprised. He died in 212 BC. Really? He looks very well, doesn't he, considering? <laughs> This is the famous Greek philosopher Aristotle. Oh, hello, Harry. <laughs> he wrote the famous book about ethics. Oh, yes. Do you know about ethics? Yes, a little. Somewhere near Sussex, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> ah, now here's a famous one. Oh, yes. I recognise him. Yes. Uh, good evening. What do you think of it so far? Roguish! <laughs> Oh, he said that without moving his lips. <laughs> ah, another famous Greek, Archimedes. Oh yes. oh, yes. Now, do you know what he did in the bath? <laughs> Surprise me. <laughs> he was sitting in his bath trying yes. to solve a problem. Oh, yes. And he suddenly shouted, Eureka, I have found it. He found the soap. <laughs> no, he didn't. He found the solution to his problem. Really? And the books say yeah. that when the idea flashed through his mind, yeah. he jumped out of his bath shouting, Eureka, Eureka, yes. and without waiting to dress himself, rushed off to try the experiment. What, in the nutty? <laughs> <laughs> eureka, Eureka, I'm the very first streaker. <laughs> Oh, you know I was only kidding. Oh, you? I know you are, Miss Lulu. You know, I tried to do a bit of pop singing on my show. Did you? Do you know what a television critic wrote about me? No. He said, Basil Brush, once seen, never remembered. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, some critics can be very nice to newcomers just starting in show business. Oh, yes. I remember when I first started, Basil, yeah. I was thrilled when a critic said, Lulu's voice comes out very well. And it should. Look where it's been. <laughs> 
but you know something, if you want to get noticed, yes. what you need is a gimmick. What sort of gimmick? Well, Gilbert O'Sullivan started with a cloth cap and braces. Nothing else. <laughs> of course he wore something else. Oh, yeah. And then Elton John had enormous glasses. Oh, I bought a pair of glasses just like Elton John's. Mm. Did you? The glasses were bigger than I was. <laughs> <laughs> when I put them on, I made a spectacle of myself. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I think to get on, yes. you really want something different. Really? Mm. Yeah, I could find myself on new faces, if I'm not careful. <laughs> or non-entity squares. <laughs> what about yodeling? Yodeling? Yes, like, yodel, 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 lady. I beg your pardon. Yodel, lady, yodel, lady, yodel, oh. lady. Nice words. Yeah. Well, go on, try. It's very easy. All right. Give us a hand for the Quavers, Mr. Bertie. All right, Mr. Bertie. You the lady, you the lady, the lady. I'm the lady, the lady who. You the lady, you the lady that I love. I'm the lady, the lady who. You the little lady. I love your mind. How terribly kind. I love your chin. Oh, say it again. All right. I love your chinny chin chin. I've only got one. So. <laughs> you're the fella, you're the fella that rocks me. I'm the fella, a rockefeller. You're the fella, you're the fella that rocks me. A little fella, a jockey sized fella. You're my a foxy Rockefeller. Ooh. I love your face. See in the right place. And I love your brush. Ooh, thanks very much. I love your ears. I've had them for years. <laughs> my little bands. The rest of my tents. Sing it, baby. You're the lady, you're the lady that I love. I'm the lady, the lady who. You're the fella, you're the fella that rocks me. Rockefeller, lucky fella. You're my Rockefeller. You're my Cinderella. briefs are in my case. You better put them on, you'll catch your death of cold. <laughs> the court will rise. Here we go. Stand up then. I am standing up. It's me cloak that's sitting down. <laughs> the court is now in session. Mr Justice Hardnut presiding. First case, my lord, the Crown versus Clarence Buttermilk. Bring in the accused. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but this is going to be easy for me. Look at him. Well, beauty's only skin deep. <clears throat> Does your client plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, your battleship. Definitely not guilty. <laughs> I mean, look at him. He's the picture of innocence. He's never stolen anything before. Well, who's for the prosecution? I am a lad, Roy North QC, and may it please the court, I call the first witness, please, Constable Nickham. Please, Constable Nickham. <laughs> Swear to tell the truth, the old truth, nothing but three. PC 148, I, Nickham. Uh, please stop the <laughs> examination. <laughs> When the accused was arrested, these items fell from his person. I ask you, what does this suggest? He had a hole in his pocket. <laughs> For what purpose would a man use a pair of nylon stockings? Well, there's a lot of it about. <laughs> Show the court, Constable, how a villain would use that stocking. <laughs> Excuse me, Constable. Your seam isn't straight. 
You see what that stocking does for the constable? Yes, it makes him look years younger. <laughs> constable, is it true that this man is known to the police as a cat burglar? Objection! My client wouldn't go around pinching pussies, would you, Clarence? <laughs> And the constable would testify that when he addressed, arrested this man, he was the worse for drink. Just a minute. I want to be objectionable again. Is my learned friend intimating that my harm is hard done by client was under the affluence of alcohol? Yes, I am. He was as drunk as a lord. Did you say drunk as a lord? Yes, my lord. Ooh! <laughs> I don't believe in your seamanship. He was as sober as a judge. Thank you. <laughs> During the months of May, June and July, this man committed six burglaries per week. If everybody worked as hard as him, this country would be on the way back to prosperity. <laughs> <laughs> your steamship. My client is a conscientious man of toil. So conscientious he came straight here in his working clothes. <laughs> Standing there in the dock, upright, tall, dark and handcuffed. A pillar of respectability. <laughs> there stands a truly humane man. My lord, what has this man done for humanity? Well, for one thing, he kept three or four detectives in regular work. I appeal to your comradeship. Your lordship, you fool! Sorry, your lordship, you fool. Who said that? <laughs> he did. I did not! Mr North, I will not countenance any flippancy on the part of the prosecution. When will you call to the bar? He doesn't have to be called to the bar. He's in there as soon as it opens. <laughs> <laughs> what about Silence, the rest? Mr North, this is a court of law. The law is an ass. Ooh! Did you hear what he said, your flagship? He called you an ass. Silence! Uh, silence. silence. Time. <laughs> Time once again for another thrilling episode in our serial story, Bulldog Basil, Secret yes. Service Man. Ready for this week's instalment, Basil? Yes, I'm listening. Basil learned that he was a colonel who commanded a regiment of Indians. Any cowboy? Of course there weren't any cowboys. He was in the Indian Army. Oh and had lost an eye in a skirmish in the Khyber Pass. You know that Colonel we met in the country last week? Oh, you mean Colonel Bagshot Frimley? Yes, he's got a glass eye, you know. Really? Mm. Did he tell you? Mm, not exactly. It came out in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> At the ship's dance on the previous evening, Basil had met the Colonel's wife in the gentleman's excuse me. What was she doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> the gentleman's excuse me is a dance. Oh, I beg you, ever so pudding. <laughs> She was the perfect example of a mensab in the Raj, yes. typically British. My landlady's typically British. She looks like John Bull. Mm. <laughs> Don't be rude. I wouldn't be rude. <laughs> and the lady had told Basil that she was a direct descendant of General Lord Clive, one of the foremost conquerors of India. Now, there's a coincidence. What? I'm one of the foremost conquerors of Shepherd's Bush. Yeah. Mm. That's my champion conquer there. Oh, really? Yes. That's a 29er. A 29er? Yes. That's very good, but just a minute. What? I've got one here. Huh? 36er. <gasps> a 36er? That's right. Wow! Whoa. Would you like to become a member of the BBCC? What's the BBCC? The Basil Brush Conquer Club. <laughs> you All have right, to then. play me first, you have to play me first, and if I beat your 36er, my 29er will become a, um, a, um, a heck of a lot of it, won't it? Mm. Right, you're on then. All right, well now... Mind where you're hitting. You could knock my little bonts off, you know. All right. Right. Found Can the bomb, wait. <laughs> Look what you've done. <laughs> you've disintegrated my 29er. <laughs> I've nurtured that conquer since last year. I harvested that conquer with my own two little paws. I soaked it in olive oil, pickled it in vinegar, baked it in the oven. Now look at it. I wonder what it tastes like. <laughs> anyway, mine's a 65 now. Just a minute. What? Hang about. Hang ever so about. What? I'm going to call up my reserves. I've got a second string to my conker. Yeah. Tinker, bring on my reserve conker. There's a good boy. Come along, fetch it. That's it. Uh, here he is. Uh, stay, boy. Stay, stay. Yeah. <laughs> There's a good boy. Give me the conker. Come on. Give Bazzy the conker. Come on, drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it, you fool! <laughs> Keep going, keep going. Come on, Mr. 
right. I'll beat you this time. All right, And then. I'll have a 60... Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> and I'll have a 66 of this time. Right, right. Come on, then. Right. right. Now, get that string out of the way. I'm going to beat this. Keep your chin up. Right, here. Right. And don't move it. That's I'm cheating. I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it. I'll get two good. Oh, two. Mm. I'll get three. <laughs> Got it. Ah, no. Uh, no. What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, Great. As an Indian steward in a turban brought round a tray of drinks, Basil failed to see him pour the contents of a file into the glass of port. Engrossed in the conversation, he <laughs> raised the deadly doctor drink to his lips. <laughs> And that's all we've got time for, Basil. There's no more interruptions. <laughs> oh, that's better. I'm dead unlucky now, aren't I? What do you mean, unlucky? No muzzle. <laughs> Basil's glass was poisoned with some deadly arsenic. That glass of pooky poona's gonna make him Uncle Dick. Someone tried to murder him. He'll fix it double quick. Fiddlers used to tremble when they heard his name. Will he drink the poison? Is our hero doomed to die? If someone doesn't warm him, he's gonna kiss himself goodbye. Will the deadly Ying Tong hear again his battle cry? Stand up for England, home and duty. He was a brave, brave man. Bo <laughs> Dong Basil, the secret service man. In India and Africa, in China and Japan, they knew the history of He was a secret spy. And the end of his love, he won't hurt his back. Joe, you scoundrel! Take 